Boxing has a long list of minor and major injuries which can occur, but our main focus will be on the brain injuries, as the brain is one of the most important, fragile and vital organs of our body. Damage to the brain can lead to difficulties such as headaches, dizziness, fatigue, depression, irritability and memory problems, anxiety, frustration, impulsiveness, problems which can affect movement and speech, emotional and behavioural problems and many more issues, the list can go on and on and on. Boxing have some of the same injury risks as other sports, but because the main target is the chest and the head, boxers are at a higher risk for brain injuries. No other sport has the express goal of causing injury to the brain. Boxing is most dangerous in terms of chronic injury or injuries accumulated over the boxer's career. The American Association of the Neurological Surgeons says that 90% of all boxers sustain a brain injury. Boxing may account for fewer deaths than some of the other sports, but the number of boxers suffering brain damage are believed to be much higher than recorded. Death due to brain trauma. In the journal article entitled Boxing, Acute Complications and Late Sequelae, Hans Forstel, MD, and his team of researchers in Germany reported that there had been an average of 10 boxing deaths per year since 1900. Of these deaths, over 80% were due to head and neck injuries suffered in the ring. These injuries included ruptures in brain vessels, epidural hemorrhages and subdural hematomas in which bleeding occurs in the brain. It is just repetitive trauma to the head like whiplash on a daily basis. The brain has very little space to move inside the skull and repetitive trauma on an encased organ is very bad. Even if you have strong neck muscles, the punches will take its toll. So what happens to the brain when you get a blow to the head? The following are some of the common brain injuries related to boxing. Concussion. What happens in the brain during and after a concussion? A concussion, which is a form of mild traumatic brain injury, occurs after a blow to the head. The brain is surrounded by fluid and protective memories called meninges, which usually cushion the brain. During an impact, the brain is pushed against the inside of a skull and can be bruised. In addition, different parts of the brain can move at different speeds, producing shearing forces that can stretch and tear nerve tissue. They also alter the balance of ions and chemicals in the brain, which impairs nerve cell function and contributes to the loss of consciousness seen in concussion. Some nerve fibers can recover after such an injury, but more severely injured nerve fibers can permanently lose the ability to send signals and communicate with other brain cells. A single concussion is not always dangerous and can normally recover, but people at significant risk are professional athletes who experience repeated episodes of severe concussion, such as boxers. Boxers are sometimes called punch drunk. If they develop slurred speech and poor concentration after receiving repeated punches and blows to the head during their careers, repeated episodes of concussion can cause long-term problems with mental abilities and trigger dementia and may result in permanent damage. This type of dementia is also known as chronic traumatic encephalopathy, CTE. What is CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy? CTE is a progressive degenerative disease of the brain found in athletes and others with a history of repetitive brain trauma, including symptomatic concussions as well as asymptomatic subconcussive hits to the head. CTE has been known to affect boxers since the 1920s and other athletes who have a history of repetitive brain trauma. The trauma triggers progressive degeneration of the brain tissue, including the buildup of abnormal protein called tau. These changes in the brain begin months, years, or even decades after the last brain trauma or in the active athletic involvement. The brain degeneration is associated with memory loss, confusion, impaired judgment, impulse control problems, aggression, depression, and eventually progressive dementia. Diffuse axonal injury. Diffuse axonal injury is the result of the brain moving back and forth in the skull as a result of acceleration or deceleration. Boxing is a common cause of diffuse axonal injury. When acceleration or deceleration causes the brain to move within the skull, axons, the parts of the nerve cells that allow neurons to send messages between them, are disrupted. As tissue slides over tissue, a shearing injury occurs. This causes the lesions that are responsible for unconsciousness, as well as the vegetative state that occurs after a severe head injury. The diffuse axonal injury also causes brain cells to die, which causes swelling in the brain. This increased pressure in the brain can cause decreased blood flow to the brain, as well as additional injury. The shearing can release chemicals which contribute to additional brain injury. Subdural hematoma. A subdural hematoma is a serious condition where blood collects between the skull and surface of the brain. It's usually caused by a head injury. 
The dura is a tough tissue that covers the surface of the brain and separates the brain from the skull. There are a series of veins called bridging veins that exist between the dura and the brain surface. After a blow to the head, the brain essentially violently shakes inside the skull, causing the small bridging veins to tear, thus resulting in bleeding and clot formation. The collection of blood and clot is known as a subdural hematoma. If not diagnosed and treated immediately, this bleeding may cause severe pressure in the brain and may result in the death of a boxer. In fact, most deaths that occur in the ring are secondary to the subdural hematoma. Head injuries is a cause of Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is the most common type of dementia. The term dementia describes the loss of mental ability associated with gradual death of brain cells. Like all types of dementia, Alzheimer's is caused by the brain cell death. It is a neurodegenerative disease, which means there is a progressive brain cell death that happens over a course of time. Although extensive research now suggests major head injuries increase the dementia risk in later life, scientists do not know the biological changes that cause this effect. People who have had a severe head injury have found to be at higher risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. According to a new study from Imperial College London, Long-term survivors of traumatic brain injury who develop brain issues have an increased number of amyloid beta, AB plaques, a hallmark of Alzheimer's disease. Traumatic brain injury, TBI, is a form of injury that happens as a result of sudden head trauma causing damage to the brain. Patients with traumatic brain injury and patients with Alzheimer's disease have plaques in an area that is affected at an early stage during Alzheimer's onset. Moreover, people with brain injuries also had plaques in the cerebellum. Here's what happens. Alzheimer's disease disrupts critical metabolic processes that keeps neurons healthy. The disruption causes nerve cells in the brain to stop working, loses connections with other brain cells and finally die. The destruction and death of nerve cells causes the memory failure, personality changes, problems in carrying out daily activities and other features of the disease. The brains of people with Alzheimer's disease have an abundance of two abnormal structures, amyloid plaques and neurofibrillatory tangles that are made of misfolded proteins. The third main feature of Alzheimer's disease is the loss of connections between cells. This leads to diminished cell function and cell death. Amyloid plaques. One of the hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease is the accumulation of amyloid plaques between nerve cells, neurons, in the brain. Amyloid is a general term for protein fragments that the body produces normally. Beta amyloid is a protein fragment snipped from an amyloid precursor protein, an APP. In the healthy brain, these protein fragments are broken down and eliminated. In Alzheimer's disease, the fragments accumulate to form hard, insoluble plaques. Neurofibrillatory tangles. Neurofibrillatory tangles are insoluble, twisted fibers found inside the brain cells. These tangles consist primarily of proteins called tau, which forms part of the structure called the microtubules. The microtubules help transport nutrients and other important substances from one part of the nerve cell to another. In Alzheimer's disease, the tau protein is abnormal and the microtubule structures collapse. Parkinson's disease is a chronic and progressive movement disorder, meaning that the symptoms continue to worsen over time. Exactly what causes the loss of nerve cells is unclear. Little studies have been done to see if there is any link between traumatic brain injury and the link to Parkinson's disease. But according to the UCLA Brain Injury Center in Los Angeles, traumatic brain injury increased the risk of Parkinson's disease. In another recent study, researchers at the University of California, San Francisco, found the more times a person had traumatic brain injury over the course of the study, the greater the risk of developing Parkinson's disease. Here's what happens to the brain of people with Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease occurs when nerve cells or neurons in the brain die and become impaired. Although many brain areas are affected, the most common symptoms result from the loss of neurons in an area near the base of the brain called the substantia nigra. These neurons normally produce the neurotransmitter dopamine, which sends signals to the basal ganglia, a mass of nerve fibers that helps to initiate the control patterns of movement. Loss of dopamine results in abnormal nerve firing patterns within the brain that causes impaired movement. Studies have shown that most people with Parkinson's have lost 60 to 80% or more of the dopamine producing cells in the substantia nigra by the time symptoms appear, and that people with Parkinson's disease also have the loss of nerve endings that produce the neurotransmitter nor epinephrine. Amateur boxers wear protective headgear that can limit the risk of head injuries such as cuts and bruises, but there is evidence that protective headgear does not reduce the likelihood of the most severe form of boxing injury, brain damage. 
Headgear cannot stop your brain from moving back and forth in the skull. Research published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine found that there was no good evidence that mouth guards and helmets ward off concussion. Over time, professional and amateur boxers can suffer permanent brain damage. There are boxers with minimal involvement and those who are severely affected. There are some boxers with varying degrees of speech difficulties, stiffness, unsteadiness, memory loss and inappropriate behaviour. Recent studies have shown that the most professional boxers, even those without symptoms, have some degree of brain damage. Please don't forget to like us and share us on the Digital Member Facebook and Twitter. Please also subscribe to the Digital Member YouTube channel in the links below.